Hey guys and welcome! So you just got your hands on Battlefield 2042 and you are new to the game or even to the whole franchise? I know things can be overwhelming at the very beginning, but no worries, I got you covered. In this video I will give you a full guide to the game with everything you need to know, from the game modes and the specialists to the weapon customization and the ping system. And if you are only looking for a specific topic, you can also jump forward with the video chapters. But we're gonna start with a quick overview of the home screen because that's the first thing you will encounter. At the play tab you can select the game mode and there are several playlists available for each of them. The classic modes are conquest, breakthrough and rush and there's always a normal playlist available for them but also a limited time playlist that usually change once a week on Tuesdays when the new weekly missions will be activated. These additional playlists have different settings or only run a specific number of maps but that's always explained in their description. Conquest is a sandbox mode played on large maps with up to 128 players with several flags scattered across different sectors on the map and the goal is to capture, hold and defend more sectors than the enemy team. Breakthrough on the other hand is a more linear mode where an attacking team has to battle through several sectors of a map while a defending team is trying to stop them. If the attackers are not able to take all sectors before the tickets run out, the defenders win. Rush is pretty similar, only that there are no flags to attack or defend, but MCOMs that need to be armed by planting a bomb instead. The attackers need to destroy both objectives inside a sector to progress to the next one and the defenders have to stop them and also disarm the objective once a bomb was planted. When you are close to an objective at either conquest or breakthrough and you point your crosshair at its icon, you can see how many allies and enemies are on the area. And with tab or select, you can open the scoreboard to check your own and your team's performance during the match. Back at the start screen, further down the list, you can find portal and hazard zone and these are completely different parts of the game. In Portal you can set up your own servers and experiences and also play the games others have created. Plus you have access to the maps, factions, weapons and vehicles of the classic titles Battlefield 3, Bad Company 2 and Battlefield 1942. Your own experiences can be created with a Portal web editor and then hosted here in the game. And with a browser you can check for community creations. In addition there are also two featured modes available that change twice a week on Tuesday and on Friday, so it's always worth Worth taking a look in here. Hazard Zone on the other hand is an escape mode where you drop with a squad of three other players and have to collect data drives from crashed satellites. But similar to Conquest or Breakthrough there is a short tutorial available in game for this mode and I would recommend to watch it before you hop into it. It's perfectly explained and I couldn't do it any better within only a few sentences. What's also important to know is that you can play solo matches against AI in the modes Conquest and Breakthrough and in these you can also gain limited XP and unlock all of your weapon attachments pretty fast and easy. But I've done a full video about this topic already, so just check it out if it's interesting for you. When you switch over to the collection tab, you can find all of your specialists, weapons, gadgets and vehicles and over here you can customize them with cosmetics but also set up your weapons and vehicles. For the specialists, there are different sets of uniforms available that can either be unlocked with your world level and by playing the unique abilities of the character or bought from the in-game store. The small dot next to a specialist's picture shows your mastery level with them. And for the weapons and vehicles it's pretty similar. There are different weapon types available in the game like SMGs, assault rifles, LMGs and so on. And at the beginning you only have access to one weapon of each type and a few of the gadgets and vehicles. And the rest needs to be unlocked by ranking up your overall level or by doing assignments which are short missions you need to complete. The weapons with the small BF3 or BC2 symbol on the side are so called vault weapons and these were available in former titles of the series like Battle Battlefield 3 and Bad Company 2 and are now part of the arsenal over in Portal but also made their way into the normal game. There will be more of them added in the future so it's definitely helpful to know where they come from and how to unlock them. The weapons that are locked but are not coming over from Portal like the Avances or BSVM were available in former seasons of the game and all of them, the old content and the bold weapons need to be unlocked by completing these assignments. 
Attachments for weapons or vehicle upgrades are unlocked by doing kills with the respective weapon or vehicle, and the little dot next to the weapon symbol in the overview is again the mastery level. All weapons and gadgets can be used by any specialist, so you are completely free in creating your loadout and only vehicles are limited to the respective factions. When you select one of the weapons, you will then get access to the plus menu, and this stores some of your attachments and you can always access it during a match when you are on the map. It allows you to quickly swap your complete weapon setup or only single attachments and be prepared for different situations. In the collection, you can select the attachments you want to take with you in the plus menu and also change their positions with the left mouse button on PC, X on Xbox or Square on PlayStation. The attachments that are set in the first slots are are always equipped at the start of a match, so be sure to set the ones you want to have as default into these slots. Note that you can use and modify the plus menu for all weapons, including sidearms, so don't forget to take a look at them as well. When you are on the map, you have to hold T on PC, LB on Xbox or L1 on PlayStation to open the menu, and with the mouse or the buttons of the controller, you can then swap attachments and equip them by releasing T, L1 or LB. Each arm of the menu is for a specific attachment type, so on top are the scopes, to the left side everything that belongs to the barrel, to the right side all magazine attachments and downwards are all grips and underbarrel launchers. When switching attachments you can check on the left side how your weapon stats will change and what kind of advantages the new attachments will have. What is also important is that attachment slots cannot be removed from the plus menu anymore, so once you have three slots filled they will stay filled and you can only swap attachments with others but not reduce the plus menu anymore. If you have one of the hybrid scopes equipped, you can also toggle them by pressing F on PC or right stick on console, and to activate an underbarrel launcher, if it is equipped, you need to press X on PC or D-pad down on console. Most weapons also have different fire modes, from fully automatic to burst or single fire, and to switch between them you have to press V on PC, no matter if aim down sights or not, and on console you have to aim down sights and then press D-pad down. What the game does tell you is that the crosshair also changes depending on the fire mode you set. So when it's full you are on auto fire, when its lines have spaces you are on burst fire, and when the top line is missing you are on single fire mode. This way you won't have to look at the bottom right corner of the screen to tell which fire mode you have enabled and you can directly see it in your crosshair. Now a few words to the different specialists and their abilities. There are 13 specialists available at the moment, with one more being added in Season 4, and 8 of them are available right from the start, while the rest either needs to be unlocked by playing or by completing the aforementioned assignments. The latest specialist, Zane, can be unlocked at level 4 of the current battle pass. All specialists are still assigned to one of the four battlefield classes, Assault, Engineer, Support and Recon, but at the moment it doesn't matter in terms of available gadgets and weapons. This will change a little bit with the reintroduction of a class system later this season, but for now it's completely open and the classes don't matter. Each specialist has a unique active and passive ability that is bound to that specific character, and to choose the active ability or gadget during a match, you need to press 3 on PC or D-pad left on controller. If your specialist has more than one gadget equipped, you can scroll through them by pressing the aforementioned button again. The mastery of each specialist also challenges you to play their respective abilities. So starting with Sundance, you can use a wingsuit that replaces the parachute and helps you to quickly maneuver on the map. Plus, there are two different grenades available as ability with the so-called grenade belt, and these are the scatter grenades that burst into four explosives around the impact of the grenade, and the anti-armor grenades that automatically lock onto vehicles, aircrafts and gadgets when thrown into their direction. Then there is Dozer, who is equipped with a ballistic shield that not only protects him from enemy fire, but also reflects enemy bullets and can be used to do melee kills against opponents. And in addition, he is more resilient than others against explosive damage, which means he takes 50% less damage from explosives and also recovers faster from them. Next up is McKay, who has the ability to move faster when aiming down sights and on zip lines, and is equipped with a grappling hook that attaches to almost all surfaces, no matter if static or moving. Once attached, the rope is retracted and pulls you towards the attached point. 
Zane is the latest addition to the game and comes with an airburst rifle that is very efficient for hitting enemies behind cover, plus he has a passive ability that allows him to regain health a lot faster after doing a kill. But I've just done a full video about him, so be sure to check this out as well, especially if you're struggling with the airburst launcher. Then there is Irish, who is a specialist for fortifications, cause he carries a deployable cover that protects everyone behind it from enemy fire and a shootdown sentinel that works like a trophy system and destroys incoming enemy explosives. His passive ability is that he starts into a match with 10 shield points and for each enemy he kills he recovers 5 shield points when collecting their ammo pouch. Next up is Boris and he is equipped with a sentry gun that automatically spots and fires at enemies within a certain range and his trait is sentry operator which increases the efficiency of the sentry gun when Boris is inside the green circle that appears around the turret. Liz was added with season 1 and has a player controlled missile launcher that can be fired at any target but is most efficient against aircrafts and as a passive ability she is able to see damaged enemy vehicles through walls no matter if ground or air vehicles. Then there's Casper who is equipped with an OVP recon drone and a movement sensor and with a drone you can hover over areas to spot enemy targets for your team and also deactivate vehicle weapons and turrets with an EMP blast. The movement sensor appears as a small pulsing circle at the bottom of the screen and turns red when the enemies are nearby. Rao is the second available recon and has a cyber warfare suit that allows him to spot enemies and also hack them and when a vehicle is hacked the weapon systems get disabled for a short amount of time while hacking infantry will disrupt their HUD and also spot them and all enemies around them. In addition Rao will also automatically spot everyone who deals damage to him. Pike has similar abilities with her EMGX scanner cause it allows her to highlight enemies within a certain distance for herself even through walls and spot them for her team on the minimap. In addition everyone she's dealing damage to becomes spotted as well. Then there's Falk who is one of the support specialists and is equipped with a Surat pistol she can fire at her teammates to heal them from distance. And even if you miss a teammate the Surat will stay on the ground just like a pouch and can be picked up when a wounded teammate is walking over it. In addition Falk can revive allies with full health. Same for Angel, he can also revive all of his teammates but only with 50% health. But in addition he resupplies all of their weapon ammunition with a revive as well. Angel can also throw ammo packs from his back and call in a loadout crate with which all teammates can change to other loadouts while on the map, plus it resupplies all of their ammo when they simply interact with it. To call in the crate just hold the aim down sights button when the ammo bag is in your hands. And then there's Crawford who came in with season 2 and he can also revive everyone with 50% health and resupplies their gadget ammo while doing this. In addition he has a mounted minigun that can be placed on flat surfaces but needs to be manually operated by a player. And now a few more words on healing and reviving in Battlefield 2042, cause the support specialists are not the only one who can revive, they are only the ones who are able to revive all teammates. But revives within a squad can also be done by every player, no matter the specialist, with a so called body revive that you might know from Battlefield 5. The only disadvantage of this squad revive is that it takes much longer and your mates will only get up with 50% health. When it comes to healing, Battlefield 2042 also has some more alternatives, cause first of all you regenerate full health automatically after an amount of time and in addition all specialists can equip the medic crate as a gadget that can be dropped on the ground and when an injured teammate is within its area of effect they will regenerate over time. The medic crate has a short cooldown so if you heal yourself up with one you can't immediately use it again in case you take damage but you can heal on another one. Or you look out for syringes from Falk and simply pick them up. All medic crates and also the lost syringes can be identified with a marker and the crates can even be seen on the minimap. If you want to be independent from your team or squad you can also take the med pen with you and heal yourself. For resupplies there are also two alternatives and one of them is the ammo crate that can be equipped by each specialist as well and just like the medic crate it resupplies within its area of effect and also has a cooldown. The other option is to pick up ammo pouches from dead enemies or teammates simply by walking over them. This will only resupply a small amount of ammo but can keep your magazine full when you always do it. And if you should still run out of ammo just switch to another ammo type or magazine size with the plus menu for this you will have full reserve ammo again. 
What's also important to know in Battlefield 2042 is the spotting system and the Como Rose, cause that's your only way of communicating with your squad and team if you don't use the voice chat. So when you point your crosshair at an enemy in close range, they will automatically have a red dot above their heads, making it easier to tell friend from foe. But this will not spot them. To do this, you will have to press the spotting button, which is Q on PC, RB on Xbox and R1 on PlayStation. This 3D spotting can be done on any range and will mark the enemy with a red dot above their heads and also on your team's minimaps. When you press the pink button twice, you will set a danger mark at the location your crosshair is pointing at, but this will only be visible for your squad mates. This way you can ping different situations on the map, like enemies hiding behind cover or vehicles, but also gadgets like medic or ammo crates. When you hold the spotting button, you will open the comma rows and with this little menu you have access to different short commands and phrases, can request ammo and heals and if you are the squad leader, you can also give orders with it. With F on PC, LT on Xbox or L2 on PlayStation, you can extend the menu for more short commands. What's also important to know about the whole spotting mechanic in Battlefield 2042 is that you can not only get spotted manually like I described or with the specialist abilities I already mentioned, but also when shooting weapons without silencers. When you start shooting, you will appear as red dot on the map, when you stop shooting, the dot disappears. The only thing you can do to avoid this is to equip one of the suppressors to your weapon, but these also work a little bit different depending on their type. Light suppressors still keep you spotted in close range and only heavy suppressors give you complete minimap stealth, so keep that in mind when you try to flank or sneak up to an enemy. But Battlefield is of course not only about infantry combat, it's also about vehicles. So to get access to one of them, there are two different ways. You can either click the vehicle icon in the spawn menu, with which you can choose all kinds of tanks and scout vehicles, planes and helicopters, as long as there are free slots available. But for tanks, light vehicles and the robot dog, you can also use the call in tablet while you are on the map. To bring it up, hold B on PC, RB plus LB on Xbox or R1 plus L1 on PlayStation. PlayStation, and then choose the kind of vehicle you need and the location you want it to be delivered to. Just like soldiers, vehicles have auto repair in Battlefield 2042, so you don't need to hold a button or find a repair station, you just need to retreat and wait for the repair to start. In addition, you can also get repaired by one of your teammates who has a repair tool or equip the repair upgrade for your vehicle. To switch between the vehicle's chase camera and the first person view, press C on PC or right stick on console. The robot dog Ranger is available to everyone as well and can be called in on most maps and modes, but I already did a full video on how to use the robot dog and also how to command it, so I don't want to get more into detail here. And at the end, just a few words to the player card, tags, badges and masteries. Your player card can be customized from the home screen as well and is shown to your squad at the beginning of a match or at the kill cam of players you've eliminated. You can choose different backgrounds for it that are either unlocked with your overall level or by completing assignments again, and that's the same for the tags and also for the badges. Badges are available for all specialists, weapons, gadgets and vehicles and show your mastery with this respective character or gear. Each badge is parted into 5 tiers and these are connected to 40 mastery stages. So once you reached mastery 40 with a weapon for example, you will have a red dot next to its symbol in the overview unlock the red tier 1 skin and also the tier 1 mastery badge. But starting with tier 5, you can already equip up to 3 of your favorite badges to your player card and it's the same for specialists and vehicles. It's something a lot of players work towards, so I thought it might be interesting to include it here. And that was it for today. I tried to cover as many things as possible in this video, but if you still have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I try to help you out as good as I can. You can also check out the playlist I made with a lot of other tips and tricks videos to Battlefield 2042. And if you enjoyed this one here, be sure to give it a thumb up and subscribe to the channel to stay tuned for more content like this. Until then, thanks for watching. I'm the Catwoman and you are awesome.